There are very few sequels to films that the fan bases just kind of throw their hands up and say, what the fuck? And there's sometimes the sequel kind of just... It tries not to rehash itself, yet it kind of digs itself a grave into, uh... Throws its hands up once again and says, fuck it, we're doing something completely different with this series uh, deal. Like Highlander, uh, with Highlander, there's Highlander 2, The Quickening, which just <laughs> unexplainable, and Howling 2, uh, you know, Highlander 2 brought into the future, uh, Howling 2 brought it into stupid, and of course there's Pumpkinhead, and there's Pumpkinhead 2, which a lot of people say is not in canon, uh, uh, fans of the Pumpkinhead series, and just... There is just, you know, so many, there's so many sequels just say, what the fuck did they do? I'm trying to think of video games, but in terms of films, you know, it's usually they go a different direction and just say, we're doing something different. With video games, you know, it, they improve onto it. People remember the sequel a lot better. Mega Man 2, Sonic 2, uh, Street Fighter 2, and all the iterations of that. And, you know, always saying that they improved upon what's already a successful formula. Uh, Sonic 2, if I said that already, I'm sorry. But, um... Uh, with this film, I can see they're trying not to rehash it. There's elements here I really respect and like, and I think pulls off really cool and very heartbreaking and emotional, uh, twisting right way that's very Silent Hill-like, with the tragic past and suicidal tendencies and the loss of his son. Stuff like that really work. The thing that loses me on to the that middle way through the second half of this film, it turns, it's trying to bold face me, look me in the eye, and says, We can scientifically figure out this supernatural phenomenon that is a virus that can spread to other objects and can be sexually transmitted to other people as well. And we'll, we can make an evolutionized form of human people into a more superior form of psychic individuals. I'm like, what the fuck? Usually in, in Japanese stuff, um, supernatural and uh, psy psychic abilities kind of go hand in hand at some points, you know? Uh, sometimes I can see parallel but with psychic uh, capabilities. You kind of think of horror uh, or uh, science fiction, you know, scanners and carry and stuff like that. But I can see the tendencies you can have with that. It's a problem that they're just scientifically trying to explain the whole ring mythos and stuff like that, and it doesn't work. And I can see why people overlook this or say like, "Wow." That it, it's the other problem is it's not a scary film. It it definitely isn't. There's no sad echo or the well ghost girl doing anything in this film. It, like she's not popping out of the well. She's not doing spooky things. She's not manipulating the people's minds around them. She's not doing anything like that. It just like it just it, it becomes really boring. There are illusions and apparitions that the main character has. But you can uh, chalk that up to mental instability because of just right out every day waking up, looking at the picture of his son and the lock of hair of his son, and just putting a scalpel to his wrist and not being able to do it. Uh, you can say that, a lot of the stress on the mind and stuff like that, he's not in his right mind. Um, and just very uh, horrible nightmares every night. But um, the the tape in itself really just the, it, it, the tape in itself is supposed to be an icon of dominance and scariness and stuff like that, and it's just thrown to the side, and they're doing something just totally different. And and I keep on hearing it's closer to the books, but I really do I I don't know I I can't say personally I haven't read them you know I didn't really reach up I didn't thumb through like the footnotes of them on uh, Wikipedia. I'm just watching the films and evaluating them uh, as is. And this one uh, has some interesting ideas that just, it's just a failed experiment. Uh, I, all I can say is, you know, skip this one, see bring two, it feels like a more tight, cohesive piece because this is not canon with it, you know, when we get to ring two, which we'll review tomorrow night. Surprise!
uh, which it, it, it's they totally dumped the storyline and says this is what actually happened. And it, and I'm personally, I think it works better. And it feels like if you watch Ring One and Ring Two back to back, which I'm going to see, it feels like a tighter and more cohesive experience than this mess. <laughs> uh, that's my opinion on Razin, and uh, happy Halloween, everybody. <laughs>